In Italy, more than 200 defendants have been sentenced in one of the country's biggest mafia trials. Members of a major organized crime syndicate were convicted of crimes ranging from extortion to drug trafficking. They were sentenced to a combined 2,100 years in prison. So Chris Livesay is joining me now from Rome with more. Chris, when I started to read about this, I thought, I, I can't believe I haven't heard about this. It's got to be a huge story in Italy. Bring us up to speed. Yeah, you know, uh, it's a great point, Anne-Marie. It's like the mafia you've never heard of. It's called the Indrangheta. One reason you may have never heard of it is because it's so impossible to pronounce and very <laughs> difficult to spell as well, even though it's responsible for approximately 80% of the cocaine trade uh, here in Europe, and it's deeply involved in drug trafficking around the world, in, including in, in the United States as well. But, uh, you know, they make so much money pushing drugs. It's estimated they make more money selling selling cocaine, the McDonald's does selling Big Macs. And so, yeah, it's a huge story here, especially because, as you mentioned, the number of people who were convicted, also the, the massive sentences. It, it took more than an hour just to read out all of those sentences. Uh, and it covers all types of people from, you know, your, your, your basic soldiers, people, bag men for, for bigger mobsters, all the way up to, to mafia bosses, even politicians here in Italy. So, yes, it's a very very big deal and and I have to stress not just in Italy but this is a global enterprise right I think that's that's fascinating and it gives us sort of an indication of I imagine the impact that organized crime has on politics on ordinary life in southern Italy I mean it must have really pulled back the curtain um, what did we learn and what do we know about the people who are convicted Yeah, well, we learned a lot about how this organization operates, and more importantly, for law enforcement, how to actually capture them in the act and, and bring them to convictions. The Andrangheta, different from its other uh, Italian crime groups, uh, you know, like the Cosa Nostra uh, in Sicily, which is the more famous one that, you know, is affiliated with a lot of the U.S.-related uh, Italian mafia. Uh, and then you have the Camorra. There's an HBO Max series called uh, Gamora that's dedicated to them. So those are the two more known Italian mafias. This one is, is less known. And one of the reasons is because they do a very good job of maintaining a low profile. Mm. They're extremely tightly knit in these family-based Based clans and because of the f familiar nature familial nature of, of these clans people are very unlikely to to rat on on their uh, fellow uh, fellow mobsters but mm -hmm. the way that the uh, law enforcement honed in on this group was by focusing on one province in particular known as Vibo Valencia and just by concentrating all of their efforts on this one province and not just by focusing on the, the, the mob bosses, but also on all of the other businesses that feed into this mafia, as well as politicians from all levels, they were able to choke them off from all of their commerce and eventually turn over, uh, turn over so-called, you know, rats who would, who, would, who would talk about their other family members. That's something you simply don't tend to see uh, in this mafia because people who do tend to, to rat on their, on their family members uh, don't tend to last very long. They tend to die in extremely gruesome ways, but somehow there were some very brave people who, uh, who were able to, to provide testimony that led to all these convictions. Well, uh, my prediction, uh, this time next year, uh, there will be another streaming service with another four-part series on uh, this, because this sounds fascinating. Chris, thank <laughs> you very much.